Hi all, we've reached the fifth video on mating patterns. In today's video, I'll discuss about Anastasia's mate. It's another classic mating pattern in which a combination of rook and knight is used to deliver checkmate. As you can see here, the eighth rank is covered by the rook and the knight guards the two vital squares f7 and h7 and black's pawn occupies g7. So in this way, all the squares around the king are taken and its mate. The more common way of using this pattern is shown in the next example. This is the skeletal structure of Anastasia's mate. Although black's king looks quite secure, white has a forced mate in 3, starting with knight e7, check. Now black is forced to play king h8, after which we have rook captures h7, check and the king's only option is to capture the rook so king captures rook and then rook h5 is mate have a good look at this position because this is what we need to look for if you're looking if you're trying to get to anastasia's mate let's go through what we need to have in place for this position one is a castle king with all these pawns on the original squares and two the rook needs to be on f8 Notice that this wouldn't work if there was no rook on f8. An open h file, or two heavy pieces so that one can be sacrificed to open the file, as in this case, and the other to deliver mate. If we have all these things, we should look for Anastasia's mate, because that possibility is always there. This time it's black's turn. Notice that we have everything in place for Anastasia's mate and white's king is castled exactly the way we want it to be with all the pawns on the original squares and the knight can jump to e2 so black plays knight e2 check and the king has to move to h1 and after that we open the h file with queen h2 check white cannot prevent rook h4 mate here again it's black to play it's very similar to the previous position, so I think I should go straight into the solution this time. Black plays knight e2, check. So after king h1, then obviously rook captures h2, check. And king captures rook. And then rook h8. White can make an interposition with the bishop or the queen, but these don't really help much. They just delay the mate, so are not of much use. In the end, we arrive at the same mating pattern with queen h4, mate. Now that you've got the basic idea, we can go into some more complex positions. In this position, it's white to play. I'd suggest that you pause the video, take your time, and see what white should play here. Notice that black threatens Anderson's mate, a mate in one, with rook a1. So white needs to play actively. If the knight could get to e7, it would solve all of white's problems. Also, if the f7 pawn were deflected, white's bishop could control g8, so Greco's mate would be possible. With all these ideas, white plays knight g6, check. Now black has two options. One is to capture the knight with his f pawn, and the other is to move his king to g8. We'll go through both of them. Needless to say, h7 captures knight is not possible due to the pin. So let's start with king g8. What if king g8? Well then we have knight e7, check. King h8, rook captures h7, king captures rook, and finally rook h1 is mate. This was the usual ending we were looking for. Now let's go back to the beginning and see the other variation. After knight g6, if f7 captures the knight, then the diagonal is opened, so white can still play rook captures h7. After king captures the rook, then we have Greco's mate with rook h1. Check out this position. It's white to play and mate in 2. You can pause the video and see if you can find it. 
In this case, it's already quite simple because the H file is open and White's rook is already placed on H1. So, what more needs to be done? Knight E7 would have been mate if Black's rook was on F8. So why not deflect it to F8? White has Queen F8, forcing it to be taken. And now Knight E7, and it's all over. Here's another interesting position. It's white to play. Black looks very solid and threatens queen h2, which would be mate. But notice that black's rook is loose. If you've seen my video on bishop forks, you should be able to spot a fork coming up. Rook e8, check, followed by king h7, and queen d3 forks the king and rook, so f5 needs to be played here, after which the queen can gobble up the rook. And this has effectively done the job for white, since there's no mate threat anymore, and white is also up material. Let's go back and see what would happen if after rook e8, black has any alternative. Instead of king h7, what if black played bishop to f8? Well then, white cannot waste time with a knight maneuver right now since there are no checks at his disposal. So, how is white to continue from here? White simply plays rook captures bishop. And this is again a check. So after the king recaptures on f8, the knight can move to f5. This unleashes the queen. So black cannot capture the knight with the queen, and it doesn't matter where the king moves, it will be mate shortly. If king e8, then queen e7 is mate, and going back, if king g8, then queen f8, a beautiful move to deflect the king, and here rook d8 is mate. That's all for today folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.